Hi, my name is Crystal Simmons, and I'm a Programs Coordinator for the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education, or ACHE for short. This video is part of a series where ACHE staff highlight tips and resources for submitting high-quality data for credits in the latest version of the Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Rating System, which is STARS version 2.2. Today, I'm going to go through everything you need to know to submit high-quality and accurate content for OP4, the Building Operations and Maintenance Credit. During this video, I'll be referring to a few different resources that are available to you as well as you complete the building operations and maintenance credit for your institution. These include the STARS Technical Manual Credit Language, the STARS 2.2 Review Template, the My Submission section of the STARS Reporting Tool, and the Help Center article about this credit. If you're new to STARS and don't know where to access some of these resources, check out our short article with the video called what resources are available to help me complete a high quality report, which can be found in a STARS Help Center article under the basics. While the rationale for this credit remains the same, the criteria does have substantive changes in 2.2. The 2.2 summary of changes can be found in the resources and support section of the STARS website. The building operations and maintenance credit recognizes institutions that operate and maintain their buildings in ways that protect human health of building occupants and the environment. To earn points for this credit, institutions must have some amount of square footage of building space that is certified under a green building rating system focused on operations and maintenance, such as LEED O&M, or it needs to have space operated and maintained in accordance with a sustainable management policy or program. Before I discuss the summary of issues, I wanted to take a moment to let you know that ACHE staff conduct a standard review process for nearly every report. Reviews help promote good data quality, but can also result in long delays if we find significant issues. We encourage institutions to pay close attention to this credit because it is part of our standard review and has one of the highest error rates in STARS. By following along with this video, you'll have a higher chance of meeting the standards for this credit, and hopefully your institution's report will be published more quickly. You can find a summary of common issues in one of two locations, either this credits help center article or the STARS 2.2 review template. For this video, we'll be working with the review template. The first common issue that I'd like to discuss is a score outlier. An institution earns the maximum of five points available for this credit by having all eligible building space certified at the highest level achievable under a multi-attribute green building certification rating system focused on the operations and maintenance of existing buildings, such as LEED O&M Platinum. Incremental points are available based on the percentage certified and or maintained space. For this credit, scoring more than two points indicates that at least some building space is being claimed as operations and maintenance certified. Certifications for O&M are not very typical in a higher education setting, but certification for building design and construction is. This leads me to the second error. A common error that we see is reporting square footage with an operations and maintenance certification, when in fact the certification is for building design and construction. If your institution has square footage in this category that is either maintained and or certified under a design and construction certification, such as LEED BDNC, it should actually be reported under OP3, Building Design and Construction. The next issue we sometimes see is claiming square footage but not providing enough detail about the policy, program, or rating system. And we use this type of information to verify that what is being claimed is correct. So be sure to provide details about the buildings and corresponding policies and programs and or rating systems being used. That said, I want to dig a little bit deeper on what's new in this credit for 2.2. In addition to formal rating systems such as LEED, institutions can report on multi or single attribute sustainable management policy or programs. Multi attribute frameworks address water efficiency, energy and atmosphere, material and resources, and indoor environmental quality, whereas single attribute frameworks focus predominantly on one aspect of sustainability such as energy or water efficiency or indoor environmental quality. If claiming either of these, it's important to provide detail on the attributes that are being addressed through the program. So for example, multi-attribute sustainable management policies or programs must detail how water, energy, materials, and indoor air quality are being addressed. If claiming space under a single attribute sustainable management policy or program, detail needs to be provided on the singular aspect of sustainability being claimed. 
Lastly, I'd like to underscore that there needs to be a program or a policy in place as well. So for example, energy metering by itself wouldn't qualify without also having a formal policy or program around energy. To help clarify this new section, we've created a document that provides examples of multi and single attribute building frameworks for this credit and the building design and construction credit. The document can be found in the Help Center articles for both of these credits. For example, under multi-attribute policies and programs, institutions may reference a building management program that is based on LEED O&M, but not officially certified, managed under the ARC digital platform, or an energy and water management program that also covers something else like green cleaning, indoor air quality, or integrated pest management. Under the single attribute policies and programs, institutions may reference a program that covers a single item, such as green cleaning or IPM, or the US EPA portfolio manager or an equivalent energy and water, water management program. The last issue to look out for deals with data inconsistencies between credits. Gross floor area is typically consistent with PRE4 if the same or similar performance year is used. A lower number may be reported under OP4 if you exclude certain types of occupied space from this credit but not others, such as parking garages, stairwells, and things like that. Also, buildings for which certification is pending may be excluded for up to two years following registration with LEED or another rating system. As always, discrepancies between these fields are acceptable as long as the reason is clarified in the notes field of the credit. Looking at HE Test Campus, you can see that the amount reported for gross floor area under PRE4 is identical to what's being reported under OP4. Keep in mind that to ensure consistency, once you have PRE4 filled out, you can use the copy from button in the credit OP4 to ensure that consistency. So to recap the common issues to watch out for in building operations and maintenance in STARS version 2.2 are score outliers resulting from reporting square footage that doesn't actually qualify, claiming certifications under design and construction rather than operations and maintenance, not providing enough detail to back up claims on certifications earned or multi or single attribute policies or programs, and unexplained inconsistencies in total floor area of existing building space between this credit and PRE4. If you still have questions about this credit, please email stars at Thank you for following along and best wishes on your STARS journey.